guys? Welcome to your 87th Android tutorial for the new Boston. What we're going to do in this tutorial is basically create that uh, simple stopwatch application that I was telling you guys about. Now, the first thing we need to do in order to get the stopwatch application to work is we need to find some way to reference the time. And how we're going to do that is we're going to get the time, the current time, from the system, um, which is the Android. So um, that's basically the core concept of this lesson and what we need to do is we need to set up a text view above our on create method called show results and we also need to create two buttons called start and stop oh wait no 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 we need to call create two longs which is start and stop so we can work with you know a tenth of a second milliseconds milliseconds yeah that's what I was looking for not a milliseconds aren't even a tenth of a second but that's what we're working with is milliseconds um, so start stop and uh, now we just need to kind of set up again a reference for our show results which was our text view of our first tab so we're gonna say show results equals uh, text view find view by ID R dot ID dot uh, TV show results or whatever you guys label that as and now we also since we set up our buttons in the last tutorial uh, we need to set up our on click listeners for those buttons so we're just gonna say button start dot set on click listener uh, to this and button stop dot set on click listener to this nothing new there as well so all right now we're gonna go down to our switching case where we um, where the magic happens so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our starting variable um, right when we hit our start button uh, we're gonna get the current time from the system so again we created a long to handle that and we called it start so we're gonna say start is equal to and then we're gonna say system into the system class and when we hit dot we can get current time in milliseconds right here and um, so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna use pretty simple I mean this right here is the core concept of this lesson just to get you know whether you're working with velocities on touch events you can you know start the time right when they touch the screen and release the time right when they release the screen or get another time when they release uh, their touch event and then you can calculate some kind of velocity or something like that if you want but uh, you're always gonna have to refer to some method of time and we're gonna do that by system current time and then we're also gonna do that within the stop event so we're gonna say our stop variable is equal to um, again system dot current time and there we go I mean we have a starting time and an ending time all we have to do is change that text view so we're gonna say what was our text view called um, show result well actually we're gonna say because if it's all about problem solving sorry I'm kinda of talking all over the place here but let's say if they hit the stop button and they never hit the start button then we're gonna get some kind of error if we try to you know set the text uh, because we don't have a start reference so it's gonna give us a problem so one way we can handle that again is just a simple if else or if statement so we're gonna say if um, start does not equal zero I don't know and then we're gonna print our text view so um, what we're gonna do is basically within here we're going to get our starting time minus our stop time so we're going to say uh, set up a new type of variable a long result and this is going to be equal to our stop time minus our starting time so basically it's going to be how long it took the person to go from start to stop and then we're going to say our text view which we called show result and we're gonna say dot or show results was it dot 
uh, set text and now we just have to convert this long into a, a string so we just refer to the long class capital L O N G dot and then we say to string and that's going to convert a long variable into a string so our variable we want to convert is result and basically uh, let's check it out make sure it works and we're done I mean basically all we did is we got the current time at the starting got the current time at the stop and then we found the result if the starting time was not equal to zero oh so <laughs> kinda of forgot the key step here with this is we need to set our starting equal to zero to begin with so we're just gonna say start equals zero within our on create method so that way it'll kind of problem solve for us and then let's run the application make sure it works so again this is in milliseconds so when we hit let's say stop right now our starting variable is still at zero so it's not going to display anything but we have, if we hit start wait a little bit hit stop is 247.1 milliseconds which is about two seconds 2.4 seconds um, in the next tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to format I mean it's kind of a general Java type type tutorial for the next one so if you guys want to skip that that's fine but I'm just going to teach you how to format this um, result and uh, we still get a problem because the last time we hit our start um, it's still running so it's still going to calculate every time we hit the stop button um, from that initial start so I mean we aren't going to worry about that I don't want to get too much into a stopwatch application but uh, as you can see right now we could use a stopwatch for like laps like oh that's lap 1 51 seconds that's lap 2 54 seconds whatever I need to either go to bed or create that Java tutorial I'll see you guys then uh, have a good one. Peace.